playground. Hooray! This is the Black Lives Don't Matter podcast. <laughs> That's what I said. Black lives don't matter. What kind of fuck up podcast is this? Black lives don't matter. Really? Man, who is this dude? Black guy? Wait, so a black man got a podcast called Black Lives Don't Matter. It's like President Obama waving the rebel flag. I done seen it all now. Maybe this is what it takes. Time to shine the light on all the times black life didn't matter. Talk your truth, brother. Listen up. Let's get down with this. Because if black lives really mattered, we wouldn't need a movement. Now would we? For full episodes, subscribe to Black Lives Don't Matter, where you get your podcasts. What's up, folks? Welcome back to the Black Lives Don't Matter podcast. I'm your host, Darren Harris. Today, I'm continuing what I started last week. I'm talking about segregation or self-love, why black Americans are planning all black communities and why it needs to happen. Now, I went over all that last week, and if you want to hear it, feel free to rewind to last week's podcast and get yourself caught up before you listen to this one, and then you can always come back to this one. But today, I want to kind of explain a couple of things, and also I want to I want to apologize for something, and I want to apologize because I said I didn't think that it was segregation. On the contrary... It is, by definition, what you would call segregation. But I think it is a necessary type of segregation. Now, that sounds funny. And I know it sounds funny, but I but hear me out. And I said some of this last week, but I'm going to go ahead and kind of brush over it again. But this is why I think that this needs to happen. Is because, like I said, there are so many services that the black communities that I've that I see are deprived of the majority of them anyway are deprived of there's poor schooling there's not adequate uh, a lot of people in the neighborhoods are uh, food insecure there's cr- a high crime rate there's there's virtually almost no health services and the health services that they get are generally substandard and that's that to me is the definition of bullshit so I feel people getting together and saying listen you know, we need some things for ourselves because another reason, again, I think that it needs to happen is there's a gap that needs to be closed in the United States. And that gap is the wealth gap. And now we are we are on the bottom of that. We're on the bottom of that gap. I mean, there are a lot of other races that are 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 far ahead of us economically. And one of the reasons is, is because those are close knit neighborhoods and they put the money back into their neighborhoods. They put it into their schools and nobody can, nobody can really hold anybody responsible. That's just, it's just what it is. It's, it's just what it is. Nobody is concerned. Like I said last week, nobody really is concerned about black people living together as long as it is in the hood. But as soon as there's something that is planned now there's there's a lot of pushback and you know i i kind of get it but at the same time i kind of don't get it and at the same time also i really kind of don't care if people don't understand because like i said before i feel that this is something that definitely needs to take place because so many years we've gone without and now we we are starting to become in this country what i call self aware we're starting to become self aware in the in a few different facts the facts that we don't have to be relegated into that space anymore we don't have to be relegated into the um um the space where we we don't get to have anything you know where black people are controlled or anything that we get needs to be overseen we're outside of that now and we're starting to realize that while that you know we're we're there's 47.2 million black americans but we're doing you know we're not doing really well but we're starting to understand that we are capable of doing better and therefore there are people making pushes to to do things 
to to bring us up to speed. Really, I mean, it's like it's like walking into a movie that everybody has seen from the beginning, but we we got some half-ass explanation out here in the lobby, and we rolled up in here with 15 minutes left in the movie. And we 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 want to we want to be caught up to speed, and this is this is the way that we get caught up to speed. And like I said before, we can't leave it up to anyone else but ourselves. We can't leave this to anyone else but ourselves. I mean, sure, if other people want to help, I, I wouldn't deny the help. But this is one issue that is uniquely ours that we have to tackle for ourselves because there's a lot of peril in this there's danger there's all kinds of anxiety there's angst there's all kinds of things that go into this ideology that's being that's being thought but even with all that pain and angst and all people are still willing do something about it. You know, it's weird that the percentage of black Americans that make over $100,000 a year is about 6%. If you have a bachelor's degree, it kind of goes up a little bit. It goes up a little bit to about 16%. But if you have some or no college, that number goes down to about 2%. And it's, uh, it's kind of dire. We don't have the money that we need to live. The majority of us, a lot of us, we don't have to, to live the way that we would like to live, which is like everybody else, which is not, you know, some big extreme where we need yachts, you know, which is like everybody else. We just want a regular, nice place to live, which we deserve. Everyone deserves that. The Indians deserve it. Everyone that's here deserves it. Even the, I mean, even the Chinese, the Chinese people that are here deserve that. The Ukrainians that are here, everybody deserves that. Everybody deserves to live in a nice, safe place. But our neighborhoods have been taken advantage of and exploited for so many years that it has indoctrinated our neighborhoods into what they are now. Some people are seeing through that and that's a good thing for us because that shows that we are on our way to bridging that gap. Now we have a long way to go. We have a lot of minds to change if we will. There's a lot of red pills we got to give out that we got to give out in order to get this to happen. But I got a, a pocket full of them. I got a pocket full of red pills to give y'all, man. If you're willing to listen, if you're willing to listen and understand and come along with me, I think that this right here might be a good move for our people and also a good move for the United States. Because right now, like I said, we are we have the 16th largest economy. Black Americans have the 16th largest economy on the planet, something like that. But we don't contribute it into our neighborhoods. We don't contribute it. You wouldn't know it. We don't contribute it into we spend it on other things. We buy Gucci bags and, and Mercedes Benzes and all kinds of other things, which, you know, that's what we see. That's what we've been indoctrinated into. But we are starting to snap out of that. We are starting to understand that we can earn this money in all these spaces that we never thought that we could. I mean, look on YouTube. There's all, I mean, just like there's, there's these people making soap. There's black ladies making soap or black men. I make soap. So we're trying to, like I said, get to a point where we are putting out good product for our people so that we can also benefit from this quote unquote American dream, even if we have to make it ourselves, because we're not going to get it's never going to be handed to us. It's never going to be handed to us. It is something that we have to take. It is something that we have to take. We have to take this It's like our respect. If you don't give me the respect I deserve, then I'm going to take it. I'm going to take my respect. And you don't, you don't, you don't have to acknowledge me, but 
as long as I acknowledge myself and we acknowledge each other, there's nothing that we can't do. And that is why we are broken up. We have the 16th largest economy. Can you imagine if we were united? It would be like motherfucking Wakanda around here. It really would be. Think about it, folks. We have the sick. I mean, we spend money. We spend the money that we earn. Whatever money that we make, we spend the shit out of it. We spend it. But we don't spend it with each other. If we spend it, if we, if we went to spend our money in our communities, can you imagine what our communities would look like? Can you imagine what our schools would be like? It would be on par, if not better, than every other school out there. And that is what people are afraid of. We have to realize that. We got to realize that. We have to realize that we are important. We are an important part of all societies, not just this one. Every single society on the face of the earth, we are important. We've got to understand that, folks. We've got to become self-aware of that. We have to understand that if we get together, then there is nothing that anybody can do to hold us down. But as long as we're broken up the way that we are, we're going to be held underwater forever. Hi, I'm Dave. I was once a squirrel troll, lost in countless amounts of social media videos, feeling triggered by other people's feelings and opinions about topics I would enjoy. I would lash out and give feedback every time to feel so attached to what others were saying was dangerous for my mental health. Choosing to leave social media and my connected devices for a day gave me a perfect detox and allowed me to become more set in reality. No more stressing over comments, just relaxation, knowing that I cannot let others' opinions bother me, giving me a sense of protection from the negativity. I feel like I've strengthened my mentality. So if you ever feel the pressure of social media controlling your emotions, remember, you have a choice to put the device down and pick up life. Black lives don't matter. Yo, what's good, folks? Welcome back to the spot. So I'm talking about planned neighborhoods, planned black neighborhoods, and why I think they need to happen. And before everybody starts, oh, that's that, you're a racist. No, no, no actually, I, I, I don't consider myself to be. Maybe I mean, some other people might have a different opinion, but I really don't consider myself to be because... I do. I do enjoy when when I learn things from other people, other races. I do learn. I do. And I, I open myself up to it and I am receptive of it because I would like to know. And I am I am free with the information that I exchange with 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 any of my friends, regardless of their race, religion or whatever they stand for. You know, if you're my friend, you're my friend. It doesn't matter where you're from. You know, I mean, it, it, let me rephrase that. It does matter where you're from. It does matter because you're not, even though you're not my race, your race matters. And that's, you know, that, that's a, oh yeah, all races matter. But you know what though? I look at it like this. Be proud to be who you are. Be proud to be who you are. But be proud to be who you are without hating others. There's a difference. I'm proud to be black, man. I really am. I'm proud to be a black man. But I don't use that to fuel hate against other races. Like, you know, some people, and I'm just using this as an example, and I'm not saying anything, but some race, oh, you know, white power, you know, why I'm proud to be white. But a lot of those people are proud to be white, but they also hate other races. They hate other races. It is an extreme thing, and I just don't agree with that. Now, be proud to be who you are, but... Love everybody. Love all people. It's okay to love yourself, too. It's okay to love yourself. It's okay to be who you are. Okay? At the end of the day, for any for anybody, anybody listening to this podcast, 
It's okay to be who you are. I'm always going to be who I am. It's something I cannot change. I can't change the color of my skin. I can't change my ethnicity. I can't change that. And I don't want to. I don't want to change it. I think I'm beautiful. I think black people are beautiful. But I also think everybody else is beautiful too. I do. Do I lean a little more towards black people? Probably. <laughs> and I don't think there's a, a problem with that. I don't think there's a problem with that. I'm, 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 I'm happy to be black. I'm proud to be black. And I'm proud to see blackness influence other places. Because there's a lot of places that, that African ancestry has influenced. They don't think so, but it has. But that's okay. You don't have to. You don't have to think that. I think you're beautiful anyway. I think those people are beautiful anyway. Anybody, anyone, it doesn't matter. I don't care if you're mixed race or not. It doesn't matter. People are beautiful. And that's what we have to get to, folks. I mean, and that's, that's right. But black lives have to matter. I'm not, like I said, I'm not affiliated with this Black Lives Matter movement or whatever that was back around the George Floyd. I'm not affiliated with it, but I'm saying myself, we have to start mattering to each other. And I'll say it. I'm going to keep saying it until everybody gets it. We got to start mattering to each other. Some people mattered to each other in Georgia and in Wilkinson County, Georgia, there's 19 families, 19 black families. They got together and they bought 97 acres of land and they started a campground. And that is intriguing to me. And the reason why it's intriguing to me is because if you don't know this about me, I live full time in an RV. So I travel around. You know, you can look at you can look for yourself at a lot of the reviews from some of these campgrounds and some of them that come from the black campers aren't really good because there's racism out here. A great amount of it. There's racism out here. Now, fortunately for my wife and I, we haven't really experienced any racism as of yet. We've been in our coach for a year, a little bit over a year, and we've been pretty much in the same space. So, we're okay for where we, where we are now, but you can read, you can just read the stories. So I started doing a little, little bit of research and I'm like, wow, that's a black campground. And I started looking around at other places and there's a few more. And in fact, there's quite a few black campgrounds, places to go camping. And I thought that was great. And I, and I'm quite sure that, they don't turn away anybody else of any other ethnicity that wants to come camp there. I'm quite sure of that. I'm almost willing to bet my ass on it. Because that's how we are. As a people, we are inclusive. We try and be as inclusive as we can. That's what got us in the predicament that we were in in the first place. We were trusting. <laughs> but... We know better now. And I think the reason that these places exist is to make the campers that have had these bad experiences to have a place for them where they can go and they don't have to experience that. Because I will say this, every place that my wife and I go, because she's Latin, every place my wife and I go, I mean, let's face it, I don't really see a whole bunch of black class A drivers. Every now and then I see a few, but usually I'm I'm looking around and it's just me driving a class A RV up in here. And so a lot of people, they'll fix their gaze over at our, our RV and they don't quite know what to make of it. They really don't. They, they really don't. They don't, they, you can see the curiosity on their face and I think it's funny, you know, but if they want to come over and talk, I would be happy to explain to them that 
I enjoy camping too. And sometimes when I come in, when I, when I roll in here, I don't need 10,000 eyes on me and my wife because it's all over the place. It's all over the place. We've stayed at a few campgrounds. And like I said, we haven't encountered any direct racism. Nobody said anything, but we have received the eyes. We definitely get the stare down. We get the looks hard. I mean, first we get the looks from ourselves really hard from a, but then we have, we have a great Dane. We have a 200 pound great Dane that we travel with. And when she comes out, people just are like, they're flabbergasted. They don't know. But the great Dane is good because she's an icebreaker. She's an icebreaker between people who are curious and us. It gives them a reason to come over and inspect and say something. It also gives me a reason to say, <laughs> I'm checking you. I'm going to check you. I'm checking this. I understand and I can identify what it is. So I'm just going to give it to you in your face, straight like it is. This is me. This is my wife. This is our dog. And if you're friendly, cool. If you're not, I'll know right away. So far, so good. But like I said, sometimes I may want to pull into a campground where I just don't receive those eyes. I just want to be accepted. I don't want to be stared at when I walk down to the pool. Because that happens. People will stare and they wave. Hey, how you doing? But they continue to stare. Because I'm a rarity in these spaces. See? So this is a little different than what I was talking about, but along the same lines because it's something that we needed to have. We need to have things like that. We need to have things like that because we enjoy things like that as well. We sure do. We sure do. And we should be able to go out and have a wonderful time and not be harassed and experience the great wonders of this country, right? Right? We should be able to do that, right? Just like everybody else. Right? I agree with that. Do you? Do you think that we need our own things? Hospitals, fire stations, police departments, municipalities. Do you think that we need our own things? Black Lives Don't Matter. Stream it wherever you podcast.